Hey, welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for September 16th. Today I'm going to read to you from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 28 in the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered right. Do this, and you will live. This is the word of God. Luther wrote, God is a jealous God and cannot suffer us to love anything above himself. God allows us indeed to love his creatures. They were created for this purpose and are good. All things that are attractive and beautiful by nature cause us to love them. This God permits us to do. But that I should cling to the creature and love it with the same love with which I love God, the creator, this he cannot and will not allow. The love of the creature should stand far, far below our love to him. And as he is the chief good, his will is also to be loved in the highest degree above all other good. To love God with all the heart is to love him above all creatures. I must be affectionate towards him, evermore cleave to him, depend upon him, trust him, have my desire, love, and joy in him, and always think of him. To love God with all the soul is to devote your entire bodily life to him. The soul in the scriptures signifies the life of the body which acts through the five senses, seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, and tasting, and everything that the soul does through the body as eating, drinking, sleeping. All this I will give up before I forsake my God, you must be able to say. To love God with all our strength is to devote all our members and whatever we may be able to do through our bodies to the love of God and sacrifice all rather than do anything contrary to his will. To love God with all the mind is to take nothing except what is pleasing to God. But there is not a man on earth who thus fulfills the law. Thus this law makes us all sinners in that not the least letter of the commandment is fulfilled even by the most holy person in the world. No one clings so firmly to God with all the heart that he would forsake all things for God's sake. What would we do if we had to give our lives for God's and Christ's sake? Still, the law requires it. Therefore, it is safer to confess that we are sinners than to have respect to our works and beautiful, glittering lives. <laughs> um, last night, Susan and I had an early dinner as I had a confirmation class to teach, and Susan had choir practice, and so we went over to the Cracker Barrel and had dinner, and as we were checking out, paying our bill, uh, the lady looked up and saw me with this shirt on, but I had my, my uh, tab in. So uh, she said, uh, how was your meal, Father? Well, I have uh, learned a long time ago not to respond to uh, such things by way of correcting people that I'm not a, uh, a Catholic priest or anything like that. I, I am a father, so I just roll with it, you know. And uh, she uh, then saw Susan, <laughs> and she said, or are you a pastor? And I said, yes, I'm a pastor, but also a father. And she laughed, and she said, well, I just wanted to make sure, because I'm a holy person. Uh, she then went on to correct herself, seeing the error in what she said, probably being a little uh, uh, fuddled by uh, her earlier mistake, and said that she was a faithful person. And she would be right to make that correction. Uh, we're only holy by nature of what Christ has done for us, and so the Father considers us holy for Christ's sake. Uh, we aren't holy in ourselves. We don't keep the commandments. Uh, that uh, lady is uh, nice as she was, and I'm sure she's a very sweet person. She doesn't keep all the commandments, and she certainly doesn't love God with her whole heart. I don't either, nor do you. None of us do. And so Jesus says to this lawyer who would entrap him by asking him what the greatest commandment is, Jesus turns the tables on him and asks him, knowing full well how he would answer, and that he would answer correctly. But then Jesus says, do this, and you'll live. Now that, that lawyer knew that he couldn't do it. Jesus said, do that, and you'll live. 
He says it not only to the lawyer, but to me and to you. Do this and you will live. We're sunk. We're done in. We can't do it. We can't love God with our whole heart. Susan has a great part of my heart. My children and grandchildren do. Uh, my church does. Uh, the things that I love to do. See, we even talk that way. Uh, we don't love God with all of us. With all our strength, with all our heart, with all our mind. We, don't, we just don't do it. We can't. So how can we live? Because Christ has fulfilled the law for us. This is what we believe. And so we have life in him. Let us give thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for doing all that we could not. We give you thanks in your name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for reading the word with Luther. Please be back with me again tomorrow.